Hi, my name is Nathan Manzani and welcome to Catching Steam. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you an activity on radiometric dating. This activity you can do in the math or the science classroom, and I'll show you extensions depending on what subject you're teaching. But if your students are able to count and divide by two, they can do the most basic activity. But you can always make this more advanced depending on what standards you're trying to hit and what your students' needs are. So stay tuned. Okay, for the sake of this video, I kind of want to just focus on the activity, but a really quick brief introduction to radiometric dating is that you have so much of a parent isotope, so maybe it's carbon-14, um, and then that's going to radiometrically decay into the daughter isotope. Now, how much time that takes is called the half-life, and that's the amount of time it takes for half of the parent isotope to turn into the daughter isotope. So for example, carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Now that would mean after 5,730 years, half of carbon-14 or half of the parent isotope turns to the daughter isotope. All right, now for the rest of the parent isotope, after 5,730 years, half of that is going to decay again. So now you're left with a fourth of your original amount. That's going to decay into an eighth, into a sixteenth, so on and so forth. So what, you are, what we're able to do is we can compare how much, um, how much of the parent isotope was there at the beginning before the decaying happened. And then you can then look at any point and determine how long it's been decaying based off of that half-life. Now for this activity, just to keep the math simple, I have the half-life being 10 years, but you can convert that number to whatever you want. All right, here's the math that I do ahead of time before I hand them the actual folders with the real fossils. So imagine we have a fossil sample that the parent isotope had a value of eight, and then the daughter isotope had a value of, I don't know, 92 just to keep our numbers a little nice right here. So at this point, we have to kind of ask ourselves, how much was there at the very beginning before anything started decaying? So at year zero, so I'll just put year zero, there was, if you add it all up, there was 100 total. All right, and that would have been the parent. Now, if you wanted, you could put another column and say the daughter had zero, but at year zero, there's 100 at the parent, zero at the daughter. Okay, now I'm using a half-life of 10 years. So I'm going to say in 10 years, how much would there have been? So that's going to be at 50. And essentially, we're going to keep going until we get to 8. So the next one after this would be at year 20. You would be at 25 years. And then at year 30 you would be at 12.5 years. And then at year 40, so at this point we know the fossil would be between 30 and 40 years old because eight is between 12 and a half and 6.25. So that's the simplest way to think of radiometric decay. Now I realize we have a really big range between you know, two half-lives here, so between 30 and 40 years, you can obviously switch these numbers to actual uh, actual years for like carbon-14, which would be 5,730. But I go ahead and practice a few of these in class to make sure they're comfortable with this process before I hand them the actual samples. But what do the samples look like? So this is what sample one looks like. I give them a parent and then I give them a daughter isotope. We'll just say, hey, we're going to count the squares here and count the squares here. So however many squares are here is what we're going to count for the parent. And then how many squares are here is how many we're going to count for the daughter. So what that looks like is if I count this ahead of time, I said that there is about 56 squares here for the parent isotope and about 694 here for the daughter isotope. So that would mean a total of 750. So now we're going to put 750 here at year zero. And then we're going to keep dividing it by two, dividing it by two, divide by two, divide by two, 
until we get to the parent isotope of 56. In this case, I went ahead and divided by two, and now between 30 and 40 years is when we get to 50, 56. Now, again, you can change these years, but this is essentially, like I said, how you do radiometric decay. All right, now at that point, they would take their sheet and if you're, you know, just want them to practice this process, you can have them put their names on it, turn it in. Um, but I have their fossil ID number on here, which is what this signifies. So it says one parent. That means it's folder one, sample one, and then one daughter. So the one just is for when they drop and fall all, all over the floor, you know what folder to put them in. If you'd like, you can also do a photocopy these. So then that way, if students do lose them, you don't have to worry about it and you can still keep doing the same activity with the same fossils or you can be okay with them losing it and just keep making more folders with a different number and then you can just talk about the importance of not losing fossil samples what happens if we do that in the real world all right then if you are in science i would recommend taking the, these samples and then putting them in a separate folder that says research and has the same fossil number on it so then they would put that in here. And now they don't get to see what other, you know, people uh, put in here while they were doing this, but you're gonna essentially have a bunch of students put their answers in here. And then on another day, so maybe the next, next day or day after, when you have a bunch of these samples, then students can go through and look through all of these and see is, are we all getting the right answer? And then that's where the discussion of a scientific consensus can come in. Other things you can do for, let's say, math. Um, you can do this for math or science. So you can have them practice measuring. So notice on this, there are no squares, there, so they would have to actually measure this. Um, they can use the you know, metric centimeter side or they can use the inches side, they'll get the same answer because this is all about ratios. Um, I also recommend getting samples that are really small, like this. Now, you can even go, so I taped this on a piece of paper so I won't lose it, but you, you can keep going smaller and smaller than this sample. And then you can start realizing like, hey, after about eight or nine half lives, 10 half lives, it becomes very difficult to see like how big this value is because there's hardly anything here and it makes it very difficult. And that's kind of what same thing with uh, all different types of radiometric decay, like carbon 14 past 50,000 years, it's not near as effective. So that's where stuff like this can kind of start coming to play. So you can make squares smaller and smaller than this even. You can also, like for math, you can start cutting out different shapes. So they had to figure out the area of this triangle or this circle. Well, we can pretend that's a circle anyway. Um, and you can cut, cut out different shapes. You can also get cubes or blocks of wood and you can have them do volume. It doesn't just have to be, you know, flat paper. So if you're wanting them to practice measuring, you know, you can keep being different types of shapes. And also you can use the actual radiometric decay formula instead of using these sheets, because this will get you uh, between, you know, two half-lifes. It's not gonna get you an exact year. So what do, um, that's where you can start showing the need for an exponential formula to be able to get to that exact year. And then you can start discussing, hey, how many decimal points do we wanna go by? So that's where significant figures can come into play. Um, but you can see this activity, even though it's, it's simple at, at its core, you can end up modifying it a lot to fit the needs of whatever subject or standards you are trying to hit. Another thing you do in math is you can give them a year, so say 35 years, and have them make their own fossil that matches that. So how can you cut this up in a way to where somebody else were to look at the fossil, they would get between 30 and 40 years. Or if you are in a more advanced class to make it more precise than that. So that's another activity. Another one you can do is because there are multiple uh, different types of isotopes, we can sometimes look at multiple isotopes within a sample and figure out how old something is based on the um, several different types of isotopes. So what you can do is you can have, you can do that same activity where they're trying to get a fossil to be 35 years old, but maybe you have some colored paper and I don't know, maybe your blue paper is going to be a half-life of 10 years while your like red paper has a half-life of 20 years. 
So both those need to be cut in a way that if you were to do the surface area of both, you would get, you know, your age to be, let's say 35 years old, but one, they have different half-lives. And for science, I highly recommend, and you can do this in math too, but I think it really helps with what a scientific consensus is, is looking through all these, all this research and having students like decide, okay, who's right, who isn't right, um, what are we arguing about here? Are we arguing about, is it within this 10 year range? If it's within a five year range, a one year range, like how many decimal points are we trying to decide here? And then what you can do as a science teacher is start challenging them and say, no, I think this it's this, this age where it's clearly not and see how well they can defend their research. Um, so that's some stuff you do for science. You can start, our, um, discussing how many decimal points should we be using? Like how precise are we? Are there ways that we can get a more precise measurement here? So maybe instead of our, um, discussing a 10 year range, it's a one year range, a decimal point, because that's really what scientists are doing. When there isn't a consensus, they are typically almost discussing those like little details, um, you know, like the decimal point here, the one year, two year, they're not discussing what decade it would be in in this case. Um, so having that discussion of what scientific consensus are would is really nice for this activity because you can do this activity whether you're talking about chemistry and isotopes uh earth science evolution to figure out how old samples are but like i said you can also use this for math so this is a really good activity depending on what subject you're teaching and what area you want to go so hopefully this video was helpful i have some links in the comments that will help you um, with random metric decay i have this in the comments as well if you want to use my half sheets um, if you have any questions, please let me know. But thank you for sticking to the end of this video.